Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you all about how to fade white spots from sun damage. Most people are aware of the fact that the UV rays from the sun lead to increased pigmentation, whether that be from a tan or sunspots, darkening of freckles. But comment below, did you know that sun damage can also lead to white spots? What are they? Well, the medical term is idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. Idiopathic basically means we don't know why they happen, but it's thought to be due to a combination of skin aging plus UV exposure. They happen on sun exposed areas, the forearms, the lower legs, the upper chest, and the sides of the face most commonly. They're small, flat, usually three to five millimeters in diameter. Upwards of 80% of people over the age of 50 have multiple of these white spots. They happen in both men and women, and they also happen in people who, are skin, who have skin of color. All right, that's what they are, but how do you get rid of them? Honestly, they're really, really stubborn. They're really hard to get rid of. Arguably, the most important thing you can do is to protect your skin from the sun. I get questions all the time from people who are in their wiser years saying, I have never worn sunscreen. I did all this sunbathing in my youth. I slathered myself in baby oil and laid out with tin foil, fried my skin. Is it too late? No, it's never too late to start wearing sunscreen and protecting your skin from the sun's rays with sun protective clothing. In the case of the skin condition, I recommend not only wearing broad spectrum sunscreen every single day, but also wear sun protective clothing. If you have these on your arms and you're looking to prevent getting more of them, wearing long sleeve shirts will help as well. If you have them on the backs of your hands, you guys know I'm a huge fan of my driving gloves. If you have them on the lower legs, do not forget to put sunscreen on your legs. That is an area people often forget. You wanna avoid midday sun exposure. That is when UV rays are most intense. Now, another thing you may consider introducing into your routine that has the potential to mitigate uh, this damage from the sun's, U the sun's UV rays is a polypodium supplement. I have a recent video all about that, so I will put it as a card here and link it down below for you guys to watch. But that is another thing that you can consider introducing into your lifestyle. After, of course, discussing with your healthcare provider if it is right for you because it is a dietary supplement. All right, that's all well and good, but what do you do to get rid of them? As I said, pretty hard to get rid of them. What actually works? Well, tretinoin definitely can help improve these quite a bit and can make them almost some of them, not all of them, but can improve them to an extent where some of them start to fade quite a bit. Um, tretinoin, if you're new here, is a prescription form of topical vitamin A. It can reduce a lot of the visible signs of sun damage and can remove sun damaged skin cells and potentially reduce the formation of skin cancer. So it's a good thing to use. And a lot of people, you know, it's an acne medication and a lot of people just think about it for the face, but you certainly can use it to other areas of the body. Um, the legs, the arms, anywhere where you have a lot of sun damage, it, it is worth considering using in those areas. Tretinoin is a prescription only medication uh, for the skin, however. Now, there are other forms of topical vitamin A that are either prescription or that you can buy over the counter. But tretinoin is the only form that's actually been examined for this purpose. But if you don't have access to prescription tretinoin and you're using another form of topical vitamin A, say a dapoline, aka Differin, or a retinol or a retinaldehyde, I say give it a shot. What do you have to lose? Provided it's not irritating to the skin, give it a shot. Uh, likely will help as well. There's, there's a chance it will help as well. I, you know, Tretinoin would be the gold standard, but if you're already using these ingredients in your skincare routine, you know, it's worth a shot because it can remove sun, help remove sun damaged skin cells. I mean, they have the potential there. If you're dealing with a lot of these white spots on the body, uh, I also have a video on the best retinols for the body. Comment below on if you have ever heard of Protopic. Protopic is a topical medication actually for people with eczema, but it can help idiopathic guttate hypomelanosis. Like tretinoin is by prescription only. With Protopic, you'll see results at about six months. There are also a ton of procedures that we can do in office that can help these out. Cryotherapy, which is that liquid freezing spray, can help fade these. Now it's a little bit risky because if 
the liquid nitrogen is done too aggressively, you actually can get more hypopigmentation. So it is best just a little light freeze. You guys know as dermatologists, we love to use lasers to treat things. Uh, eczema laser can help in repigmenting these white spots. Combining eczema laser with uh, something called 5-fluorouracil can get you even better results. 5-fluorouracil is something we actually use to treat uh, pre-skin cancers, but deposited in the skin and almost like a tattooing it in in combination with the eczema laser can get nice results in terms of improving these white spots. There's also fractional lasers. CO2 laser, for example, will be a beneficial treatment. A little expensive, but something worth considering if you're really bothered by the hypopigmentation. Chemical peels also can help. Trichloroacetic acid, 50% applied to the white spots, can get them to, to repigment. It's really cool. Um, basically, we just take a cotton swab, dip it in the TCA, apply it to the white spot, and then after that, uh, about 10 days later, you can actually expose the area to the sun. And with, within about four to six weeks, you will start to see repigmentation, or you can. It doesn't always work, but it is a, it is a useful way to, to treat these. And phenol is another peeling agent that likewise can be applied to these to peel and then later the pigment will come back. So these spot peels are an attractive option. They're just time intensive, but definitely something that, that can help in getting you repigmentation in those areas. Those are the ways to fade white spots related to sun damage. They're really stubborn. They can be really tough to get rid of, even more tricky than hyperpigmentation. So if you're dealing with these, you know, you're not alone. Most adults over the age of 50 have these in sun exposed areas. So you're not alone. Uh, if they're making you feel, you know, impacting your quality of life, definitely seek out some more, some of these more intensive treatments. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.